So if you've ever tried out for a team, then you know what it's like to run through a presidential primaries, which is going to be the topic of our lesson discussion today. If you try out for a team, you realize that there's other people trying against it. In other words, you're going to be competing with other people to get on a couple positions on the team. Well, presidential primaries are pretty similar in that sense, where you have a bunch of different candidates coming together to pick, uh, for the, or for the political party more or less, to pick the best person for their team. And that's going to be their candidate that runs for the office of the president. The presidential politics of running for the office of the president are different than many other elect elected positions. We're going to talk about primaries later in the year, um, but right now, since we're talking about the presidency, we're going to discuss how the president is elected and how that is unique from any other election. There are primaries in other uh, positions. In other words, if you run for Senate or you run for a congressman or even school board, there's primaries for that. But the presidential politics really make this different and really make it a point why we're discussing it right now. As I'm filming this, you may have been inundated with the news. Uh, people like Herman Cain and um, Mitt Romney, Michelle Bachman, we've talked about all these people already, and that's because they're coming to the forefront because presidential primaries are a, so, a much bigger deal than any other thing, so they have to start talking about it now. So there's two distinctions in primaries. One is, especially when it comes to presidential politics, uh, that each party runs their party system different. The Democratic Party uh, has a system called proportional representation, and that's where all the candidates in, in a party uh, buy for votes in a primary from that state's delegates. Uh, we're going to learn about national conventions later on, but essentially um, each state has certain delegates they send to a national convention that elects the candidate for each party. So when I say that each state is going for a uh, Democratic participation or they're going for a, a delegate from each party, I'm essentially referring to the fact that they um, are trying to get those delegates that are going to vote for them at the national convention to be their party's leader. And the Democrats have a proportional representation system. This is really key here. And what that means is that when a candidate wins uh, a certain, goes into a state like Iowa or New Hampshire, which are always the first couple of states, and they win, let's say, 60% of the vote of all Democratic voters, well, that means under proportional representation that they get 60% of the delegates from Iowa at the national convention. They're going to vote for them to become the presidential Republicans, candidate. Republicans, on the other hand, have what we call a winner-take-all system. And they are vying for delegates, just like the Democrats are, at their own national convention that, again, has their job of picking the candidate to run for president. The Republicans, though, don't have proportional representation. They don't have a system where if you win 60% of the vote, you get 60% of the candidates. No, they have something called a winner-take-all system. And this is somewhat aligned with the ideas of our electoral college as well. And a winner-take-all system, if a Republican candidate, uh, and their uh, Republican primaries are going to be the only ones that we have in 2012, if a Republican uh, candidate takes 60% um, of the vote, in other words, 60% of all Republicans pick, uh, let's say, Herman Cain. They pick Herman Cain to be their presidential candidate in Iowa. Well under the Republican system, under the winner-take-all system, um, Herman King wouldn't get just 60% of all of the delegates at the National Convention. He would get 100% of them. And this, mean, this is one reason why the Republican primaries uh, candidate is often known quicker, is because by the time we get to the National Convention, uh, we have tallied up all the states that a certain candidate has won and how many delegates exist per that state. Um, a winner-take-all system can make it difficult for people to come out to vote as well, and that's because they know if a candidate has a large majority, according to the polls, uh, they might not bother voting for anyone else because they already know who's going to win because of the winner-take-all system. But it's key that you understand the difference between proportional representation with the Democrats and winner take all with the Republicans, so that both parties uh, elect their candidate differently for the president. And so the, each time, they have to strategize differently. Republicans have to worry about much more about appealing to their base uh, than Democrats do. The Democrats, because they have proportional representation, can um, 
you know, even if they get 40% of the vote, that's still a good number, and they can still use that to their to their advantage to come national convention time. One thing that makes presidential primaries so unique is that they have to go to every state. The president, if you remember, is the only person who the whole country elects for, or who every person in the country has a chance to vote for. People that are senators, well, only in Pennsylvania um, can a Pennsylvanian vote for a Pen Pennsylvania senator. Uh, but in America, everyone can vote for the president if they're of age. So in order, that's, in order to get the, their name out and to get the participation of the national political party, uh, presidential candidates have to start really early. For example, come the end of this uh, December and into January, you are going to start seeing uh, the political election heating up really quick. And that's because the first two states, Iowa and New Hampshire, hold their primaries very, very early, often in the beginning of January. So that means that candidates have to spend numerous amounts, exuberant amounts of money um, running for president because they have to pay for uh, campaign staff in each of those states. They have to set up a volunteer base in each state. They have to travel to each state. They have to hold a debate for each state. Uh, 2012 is probably going to be the first election where it's going to cost over a billion dollars to run for president. So that gives you an idea of who can run for president. Um, but it also means things are very front-loaded, they're not spread out. Um, it, it can be weird on, a, on a, a, a presidential candidate, and that's why we get to see who runs the presidential, can, presidential um, race the best, because it's going to be so stressful for them, and there, there's a lot of times that they can mess up really quick, and that can hurt them a one week later. There's also been said as well that the easiest day on the campaign trail I'm sorry, the hardest day on the campaign trail is the easiest day as president. So we get to see how well a candidate dis handles the stress of being president. It also lets the political parties get an idea of who is running for office. The more information we have on who's running for office, the better we can pick a candidate. And that's the biggest thing. We can see how the president, the future president, whoever it may be, is going to apply the Constitution, what things they're going to fight Congress against, and how, what things are going to cooperate with Congress with. And they're going to see if their interests line up with your interests, and that's something to pay attention to. So for primaries today, all you have to do is read the textbook chapter below that I have assigned. Uh, you can listen to the recording of me giving you an outline of the textbook chapter and some things to pay attention to. Um, and obviously you have the lesson text here if you need to refer to it. If you have any questions, please contact me.